YouTube? Welcome back to my channel, The Unpopular Party, hosted by me, Party Next Shore. And today, I am back with the long-awaited Zeus documentary that y'all have been on me about, like, for the longest. We have a lot to unpack in this video. Like, I literally have, like, nine pages front and back of notes. And one thing about me, when I research and I say I'm gonna do something, I wanna make sure I get y'all the best quality. So, I really hope you enjoy it. If you're new to this channel, please make sure to subscribe. Thank y'all so much for the love and support that y'all have showed me in the year of 2022. I would never thought that I would have grown this big of a community in this short amount of time span. Thank y'all so much for y'all support. I figured we end the year off with this long awaited documentary. So sit back, get comfortable, cause it's probably gonna be lengthy and let's just get started. I'm gonna do this video. I'm gonna break it up into three parts within the video though. But we're gonna start with phase one, which is the beginning stage, phase two, the come up, and phase three, which is what's going on now on Zeus. So without further ado, let's just get started with phase one, the beginning. So if you don't know, Zeus Network was launched on July 18, 2018, and I was like, oh, Zeus is a cancer, which makes a lot of sense. But the Zeus Network was founded by social media personality, Storm Power, Amanda Century, and King Box. These was all some of the big IG comedians at the time. <laughs> hey, how you doing, officer? Where's your car? Right down the street. Right down the street? Mm -hmm. Okay, do y'all got clean sex? I knew it! Hello, Alarm! You call at the same time every morning. Hello? Speak, bitch! So, you want to go to my house tonight? Uh, yes, I would. Right, just let me know Should I follow you or what? It was also founded by Liam Palmer, who is a television producer, and he also served as the president and CEO. Now, let me tell y'all a little bit more of a backstory on Liam Palmer. Uh, he's actually been in the game for like a minute upon my research. He's worked and produced a number of shows like The Family Cruise with Terry Crews, Mary Mary. He even produced Preachers of LA. I was like, wow. Uh, you know what? Preachers of LA is, uh, you know, it, it's, it's really about these six amazing bishops and pastors who are amazing you know at what they do and uh, we're just really trying to show that they're human beings at the end of the day and uh, I think that's really I mean what the show is about uh, that that's shocking but you know he's 36 from Detroit yeah so this kind of like started off as a way for like influencers to have like their own Netflix it's been a long time coming just to be able to make a platform that's built on creators we wanted to give them something that was for us by us this hopefully will allow people to see that deeper side to us they was trying to produce a lot of original shows that was like scripted and non-scripted. All the creators at the time, they had a show on the network. Like Amanda, she had this show like called the Taste of Dan. Sean and King Bosch, they had this show called Call. And with Snoop Dogg, he was a guest appearing on there as well. King Bosch had his reality show called Your Best Life and just a whole bunch of other shows. Also being promoted heavily with the um, introduction with Zeus was a reality show on Lil Tay. So if you don't know who Lil Tay was, Lil Tay was like this little nine-year-old flexer who went real viral all across the nation back in 2018, that era. Lil Tay, the youngest flexer of the century. I'm only nine years old, but I'm richer than all y'all broke-ass haters. So the show on Zeus at the time was called Life with Lil Tay. And it was like three episodes of following this little girl around. But like the exploitation of Lil Tay, that would have to be like a whole other video because yeah. The Zeus was like a high level YouTube channel. The videos wasn't that long. It was like eight to 10 minute max. You may catch a couple 15 minute video here and there. A lot of influencers and just social media personality was coming and going to have shows on there. Candace Craig and Omar, but they had like a dance fitness show. It was side note. They was really trying to be in their fitness bag because it was a, like a lot of workout fitness shows on there at the time. I don't know if you remember Amber from Big Brother 16. She had this like pillow talk show. co host with another girl, but they would have people come on and just, you know, be nasty. And the baby bodyguard, Kane, he was also had like a little show on there talking about like people infidelity stories stuff like that but it was still a startup company at the time and trying to get you know returning viewers was kind of like their biggest challenge however what put zeus on the map and brought like a whole bigger different audience was with blame it on quay and blame it on quay he partnered with zeus network for a show called tt do you love me tt was quay character it was his persona that went real viral on like instagram and she was looking for love i got over three million followers and everybody kind of fucking with your girl right now with all that being said, what a nigga's at? And it's like a bachelorette flavor, a love style type of show. And this series was Zeus' first love show. And in a way, it was like a big break for them. It premiered on Zeus in December of 2018. A lot of people like tuned in. Quay had a lot of followers. He had a lot of fans. And people wanted to see TT find love. I know that's how me, that's how I personally got into Zeus. That's how my mama, she got into it. She was like, you know, she wants to see TT find love. That's how we was introduced to it. He also had, you know, his best friend Lala, the comedian, helping TT look for love along this journey. Some people on this show, it actually helped them because they was able to make something out of their time on 
on this show. The one that TT chose, he actually got picked for Tyler Perry to be on this one particular show. I also just found this out, but he's also on the um, revamped version of the game that's on Paramount Plus. And Big Heart was on this show. You know, he went on to be on American Idol. And actually, I don't know if he won or got second place, but he was on there. But, and unfortunately, he passed away. God rest his soul. But this really helped Zeus go through like a transitional period and helped him start doing longer reality shows. After that, B. Simone hopped on the bandwagon and she got her own show called B. Simone, You're My Boyfriend. You know, that was her catch line. You know, her friend Pretty V helped her along this journey. This is also the first time other than the premiere party where Zeus started doing special screening. These special screenings involved the cast, crew, producers, executive producers, and as well as invited guests of the media so they can have like a full red carpet experience. Also, Tanya from Little Women Atlanta, she was on this show. You know, I love you, my little women. Also, there's this one contestant on their name, Jayla, and she go by she, her pronouns. And you you know, B, Simone, and V, they was acting as if they was confused that she was there, but they end up calling her Joanna Man, you know, like the movie. Bitch, who the fuck? Wait, 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 what the fuck is this? Now they ended up keeping her on the show as like a spy and her mission was to like, you know, relay information back to B. Simone. But what I will say is as I talk more about this documentary with Of Love of Love shows, we'll start to see a pattern of like, okay, we got our contestants and then we got the contestant that was clearly brought on this show as a joke. And you know, we'll see more once I get into that, but just put a pin in that. He's also responsible for this meme if you've ever seen it. And that's where we get like some of the viral TikTok. Come on, come on. <laughs> Bitch, give Are me you that, serious? Give me that fucking mic. Who the fuck you been at, baby girl? I'm so sorry. No, seriously, do you even want to be here? And turn your big ass around and get the fuck back to your fucking seat. The fuck is wrong with your ashy ass? <laughs> Okay, Your fucking ball. ankles. Okay, this All right. Ball. With all of their following and ball, it really brought a lot of new eyes on Zeus Network. At this point, the transition of Zeus has begun. And this is what leads us into phase two of Zeus, the comma period. At this point, Zeus started tapping into a bigger market. It started to see a big success within the black influencer and content creation community. And you know, this era, which is we starting again to like the 2019 era. They had a few original shows still airing. They had this one show called The Real Dumbass World, but it was one woman in particular that came in and really started to change the landscape of Zeus. And that woman was none other than Black China. The Black China era on Zeus was an era because Black China was a really big social media personality. I call a not people knew Black China. This was after the Robin China era. So yeah, pe people knew China. So her partner with Zeus, that was definitely a power move. Come about because that was a really big deal. I, I yeah, thought. yeah, no, that was huge. That was a major turning point for us. Um, we 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 got a pitch from uh, uh, Freshy, um, who's a who's a uh, a real Public solid PR rep, yeah. and uh, he was he was her PR rep at the time, and, uh, and and her manager at the time came and uh, and pitched us the show, and uh, we were they they didn't pitch necessarily the real Black China, but they were like, hey. We want we want China to work with Zeus. We see, you know, we see what you guys are doing, and we want to be involved in this. And so we all kind of discussed several ideas in the room, right. and uh, we finally just were like, "That's the one." So they announced that her show will be on there called "The Real Black China," and it premiered on Zeus in July 14, 2019, and it was a success. The free episode on YouTube alone has over six million views. This show had like a lot of viral moments, and they had like everybody talking about it. Do it again. I'm gonna rock your world in this motherfucker. So rock it. Cause I'm ready to get the fuck ASAP after this shit. Zeus even hit a bigger market, and they partnered with WeTV. Now WeTV was a network that you can access like on your TV. You just like clicking through channels. You're like, oh, what's this? It was public view, and they partnered with Zeus Network to premiere Black China show on there. So if you know you're just at the house watching it and you want to see more, yeah, you're gonna subscribe to Zeus and be like, okay, what else they got? So Black China was not only the face of Zeus at the time, but clearly the new direction that they wanted to go into. The shows that they was doing it started dying down on, and the original creators we starting to see their presence started to like you know fade. 
fade into the background. So when Black China show wrapped up for the season, we had a few shows that developed from that. Her mom, Tokyo Tony, she had a show looking for love. It was called Tokyo Tony Finding Love ASAP. And Lyrica, Lyrica Anderson mom was only helping her trying to find love. So I never peeped this, but the security guard who was always breaking up fights and always like keeping order, he was on the show looking for love. He was still breaking up fights while trying to be with Tokyo. She, she called him Big D, yeah. Black China also had a show called Only Cams on there. And it was basically showing the lives of only. And it was just showing like the lives and the day and out of like only fan content creators. They had content creators like Dallas Way and even Danny from BGC. Hey, yeah, she was on there showing her only fans lifestyle. My own mental. Yeah. If when I post that, I'm like, okay, well, something was over my body. I'm not completely fully naked because I feel like to be completely and fully naked is really vulnerable to me and I'm just not doing that. But like I said earlier, Black China was hot with Zeus Never. Like everybody liked the show. So of course the demand for season two was hot. It was announced that a season two was coming and a trailer was even filmed, like a coming soon trailer. You think you know me after one season of the real Black China? They try to define me, hate on me, vilify me, but like a phoenix, I rise from the ashes. However, we never got a season two of Black China Show. Now, I tried to do some digging as to why her show never came out, but I found nothing. One thing I could find was an interview of Liam Palmer saying that like a season two would have to make sense and we're on China's timing. Is she gonna get another season? Are we on hold? What's going on with that? Um, Yeah, we've been talking about it. We've been talking about it. And so we're just trying to figure out, um, you know, we're just trying to figure out what makes the most sense um, and when okay. she's ready. It's up to China. Okay. However, I'm just guessing creative differences because China don't even follow this network anymore. And it's like for you to have like the number one show on this network and go from like not being mentioned at all, yeah, it must have been like some differences. But that is Stop Zeus. And at this point, we're entering into the year 2020. This is the start of a very pivotal year for Zeus. They brought on new and different producers, executive producers such as Ray J and Princess Love. It's where they actually have a lot of producing credits on different Zeus shows, if not all of them from this point. One of the shows they really started under their regime and had like producing credit for was this new show called The Conversation. Now, The Conversation was a show where they would take like two people who has like known beef with each other, sit down and talk with like no script, no mediator, no security, like just nothing. But like we just talking face to face. And sometimes there was no structure as well. And the first to actually have a conversation episode was Ray J and Princess. It was on there discussing their problems that they can move on. This time it was poor that the couple had a lot of marital issues and they didn't know if they was gonna be together. And they basically talked their issues out in front of the world. That my husband is cheating on me. You already Said let that. me talk. You keep talking in circles. And let me talk. I can say it as many times as I want. Let me talk. Or I'm getting up and I'm leaving. Well, get up and leave. And a lot of others had episode include Lyrica and A1, Tommy and Ogbar, Masika and Hazel E, Bad Girls Club and Rolling Rebel. Put a pin in them because I'm gonna get back to them. Now, most of the time, these conversations never really had a solution and was mostly just three parts of screaming and fighting. But the public loved the train wreck, so they continued to tune in. Also, as Zeus was trying to find their footing, they had a lot of shows that was like unreleased. Like I said earlier, Black China season two, and they was also trying to produce a soccer show that was an original series. I really don't know what it was supposed to be about. I remember before you used to start an episode, it used to be this long intro of a soccer player that felt so much like a fever dream. Another series that was supposed to air is what I call the original baddies. It's a show called Sexy and Social ATS. The show was supposed to air after B. Simone's show. And she said on her IG that we would see like the insights of her and the boy she picked in Miss Line going to their relationships as well as her life. And see if they're still together. The show cast was B. Simone, Light Skin Keisha, Watch Jazzy, Dakio, and Daniela and Maria. I don't want to mispronounce their last name, but them. Now I'm not sure why the show never aired, but a trailer was released. The premise was to focus on the hottest women women at the time on social media. It just never aired, we never got an update, and they just parted away. Another show that was in the word that got canceled was Santana Dating Show. Now Santana had a trailer come out in which he was gonna be finding love. And fun fact, it actually featured Miss Mamas that's in Bobby I Love You Show. He was looking for love and people was really ready for the show. Like a lot of people knew Santana and they was just like, oh, Zeus and Santana, yeah, we ready for the miss. And for the most part, it just looked as like Santana and Liam Palmer them had a good working relationship. Oh, they be asking, they be asking Liam, so we can't let them down. We not gonna let it, come on, we got you, you my partner, what we doing? Come on, you an executive producer, you starring in, what we talking about? It's, it's gonna be fire, like that's it's not big, even, come real. on. It's come big. on, y'all about to see, y'all about to see Saucy in a whole nother life, okay? <laughs> we, did, we, did, we did a big deal, this was a big deal for Zeus. 
So I'm I'm excited. So okay, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's, we know the vibes. He would be with them, you know, smoking, chilling, especially with him and Natalie. But when Natalie did the conversation episode with Red, Santana did the video saying, y'all stop mentioning my name, saying like, you know, stop lying on me. Stop lying. Stop lying. I had lying pride, girl. I was not worried about no Bad Girls Club. And Natalie, I didn't even want to talk to y'all. When Zeus tried to talk to me, I made my security made y'all move. Stop lying on me. I didn't even see Red in no crowd, girl. I had lying pride. Stop lying. Let y'all play them Bad Girls Club, them crackhead games on Zeus. Stop playing with me. Stop saying my name, my name on here, trying to get y'all views. I turned down the show for a reason. And Santana later did an interview later on. He never directly mentioned Zeus, but he was like, people was trying to make him act a certain way or do a certain way for the cameras, and he just wasn't feeling that. Turn down deals, because they like, oh, um, can you just act like you kind of like girls too? No, that's not me. I'm sorry, Santana. And that's the only way we're going to go to the top. I don't think he liked the direction that Zeus wanted to go in. And plus, Santana was really blowing up at this time. Single starting to take off. And I just think, for the most part, he was elevating his career and just didn't want to do it. But speaking of Natalie Nunn, when she became on board and started working with Zeus, she helped Zeus transition into a new era, the reality era. This brings me to phase three, our current state of Zeus. Those have been doing reality shows, but in this era, they really made that their brand. And they was giving reality shows like a lot of older reality stars that we knew back in the day. During this 2020, 2021 time frame, we saw a lot of new shows. One being One More Chance. Chance Kamal Gibbons was a contestant on VH1, I Love New York. And he made it to the final two. Now afterwards, he was on other shows like I Love Money, Real Chance of Love, where him and his brother Real was trying to look for love. Another show with Real, a hunting show, but unfortunately Real passed well a couple years ago. That was so sad. Now what people don't know about Chance. Chance has been trying to ship this love show of him trying to find love for the longest. The working title was Chance of Love, but he was just trying to ship it to any network that would pick it up. At one point, I don't know if y'all remember, Frenchie from Rock of Love, she was a producer on there trying to help get contested, but it wasn't until now that Zeus finally picked it up. However, it faced a bit of controversy. Like, it felt very misogynistic. Put your confidence right here in this paper towel. Do not offend me. You still need some work. Oh! And homophobic. And I believe because Chance comedy is really in like a old realm. It's like that type of comedy just don't work nowadays no more. A lot of times it felt awkward because he had a contestant on there who was a guy that dressed like a girl and Chance called him Mangina. Also making uncomfortable jokes about, about him and stuff like that. You gotta let your boss tuck. You can let him ride tonight. I say him because Mangina, to this day, I haven't seen anything there, but he still refers to himself as a guy. His pronouns still he him. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comment section. But like I said earlier, this is when we start to see a lot of these joke type characters in these Zeus of Love shows. Chance claimed that he wasn't into guys, so he only kept Mangina around as a personal spy in the house to keep him updated over what's to happen but it just created more mess you know all they did was just fight and chance stated that zeus made him keep mangina around because he was stirring up a lot of drama and just creating a lot of mess like even with grandmama like come on now you know chance was finna pick that woman they literally just put her on there just to get whatever laugh or reaction they can get out of the public before they sent on her sent on home and even to a certain extent, Rolly, like, don't get me wrong, she is able to make a very longevity career with the Zeus Network and stuff like that, but look at how she was put on. Like, she was introduced to the Zeus world as a Roly Poly Snacks Meal because she's the big girl that likes to eat. And I'm pretty sure Chance, well, I don't know if Chance had any ill intentions, but you know, the public still ran with it in that first season. They was kind of dragging her, and Chance and Anna was just kind of making jokes. And it was just like, do we really think Chance will pick her the way it was edited? No. This one woman on there has strong facial features, and they kept calling her a man. Don't get me wrong, her body banging, but it's something about that face. I had my quality time with him, and he knows I'm definitely not a man. Even New York was on there. He was calling her a man, and it seemed way to the fact that she may be trans because of her features. Also, fun fact, she wrote from this first season. She's actually in WWE now. She goes by the name of Nakia Line. She's she's doing pretty good, and she's very popular within the fans. So I just thought I'd throw that in there because, that, that, yeah. The jokes was falling short, but this really started to show the reflection of what Zeus was becoming. Also, this is when I noticed that, like, the fights was something that started to become heavily produced. The girls just was, like, fighting all over the house, and they had, like, no consequences. The show rap, you know, they fell with the public backlash. But they came back with a season two. Same format, and it was some returning girls like Roly Poly and Yoda. But it was, like, a lot more fighting. Like, the girls was fighting. It felt like I was literally watching Bad Girls Club. It was no love. And it, and it, it started to get to a point, like, okay, what's going on? Because it ain't really help 
all y'all careers like that. But as Chan's show was going on, we also had another BH1 icon come over and be the face of Zeus Network. And that was none other than the Puerto Rican princess herself, Jocelyn Hernandez. Now, I'm gonna keep this section brief. If you wanna check out more about this chapter, Jocelyn Hernandez, please watch my Rise and Fall of Jocelyn's Cabaret video. I'll link it right here. But what I will say is Jocelyn's presence changed the whole course of Zeus Network. And we TV partner up as well to show season one of, of Jocelyn's Cabaret. And this is like Jocelyn returned to reality TV because she hasn't done much of reality TV at this time since she had got fired from Love and Hip Hop. And she wanted to start like a cabaret, which is like, a, you know, strippers, you know, that's her upbringing. But it really helped people get into a new idol. My sister, she was introduced to Zeus because she was watching Jocelyn's Cabaret on Wii TV, and that's how she subscribed. And like season two swept the nation. Everybody was into season two. That's personally my favorite season. But season three left bitter taste in people's mouth. Never since it's been like a really low profile. It is confirmed that they will be back for a season four. Coming soon, we just don't know when. However, what is important is the fact that Jocelyn was literally the face of Zeus Network. I kind of jumped the gun a little bit earlier, but I forgot to mention it was another woman from BH1 who came over to Zeus and had her own show. And that was Drea Michelle. Now, when Drea had her own show, I think Zeus thought that this was going to be the one to replace Black China Shine, but Drea's show kind of fell short. I really watched it like that because I really didn't know that much about it. It was promoted, but wasn't promoted at the same time because they had like a lot of other shows being promoted as well. But Drea's show was really just about her like, being in her bag. Like she was I had to fall out from that Fenty contract when she lost her contract. I feel like his Drea show really wasn't what the public was into at that time. It just kind of fell short. It was too calm. But the next woman that wanted to cash in on this success of Zeus Network was the one who made the biggest change to Zeus all around, and that is Natalie Nunn. Now, this is going to be a big story, so just follow me. We're going to go back to 2020. During this time, we was in the pandemic at the house or nothing to do. So Blueface decided he wants to do his own version of the Bad Girls Club and call it the Blue Girls Club. He moved several women into his house and just let them do whatever, fight, smoke, drink, whatever. It was an OnlyFans show, but you could watch it on YouTube as well. And ironically, Rock was on the first season of this show and that's how they met. But Natalie saw people and girls was making money off of what they used to do. It's the same Bad Girls Club format. So she was like, we need to hop on this bandwagon. So her and previous Bad Girls decided to get together and do a BGC re Reunion. It's gonna air on OnlyFans. It will be called the Bad Bitch Reunion. Now, original girls for this project was like Danny and Gabby from season eight, Erica and Christina from season nine, Rocky and Shanda from season 10, Sarah from season 11, Jada from season 12. Um, also, Judy, Julie, Ray, and all of them. It was, it was a lot of people in the initial group chat of like ideas. And of course, Natalie Nunn. But it was a lot of drama that was happening from the girls wanting producer credit, talks of scamming on Natalie part, arguing. Danny, Gabby, and Erica just wasn't feeling it and they dropped out of the project. But also leaked screenshots of Natalie planning to have fake drama and fake fights for the camera. Natalie was like, oh, it'll be like loving hip hop style, you know, we'll fake fight. We won't have real fight. Kind of how bad he is now, but I'm jumping ahead. Tiana from season 11 brought on for their, you know, replacement. And they filmed the OnlyFans show. Now, if you're like, what does this guy do with Zeus? I'ma tell you, Natalie really wanted to get Zeus to pick up this show. Natalie, in his development of this process, knew and had access to Ray J. And he was a producer over at Zeus. She also be like, oh, Lemmy's gonna pick us up, Liam Palmer. Lemmy's gonna pick us up. We we have to do this. Get here, do this. So the only fan show kind of fall flat. I know some people who saw it, they said it really wasn't worth the hype. I saw some clips on YouTube. But with all the drama happening, they was able to set a conversation show with them. On November 29th, 2020, the conversation aired. And on this conversation episode, it was Natalie, Jada, Rocky, Shannon, Sarah, and Christina. And of course, hardcore BGC fans was ecstatic. Now, missing from this conversation episode was Tiana. And like I mentioned earlier, she was brought in as the replacement to the uh, reunion show on OnlyFans. So people was like, where Tiana? And it was a rumor going around that Zeus didn't want her on there because she was darker skinned. And, you know, they didn't want her to Zeus never. And this is what Natalie had to say about that. I'm I'm telling the fans, it wasn't a color thing. It wasn't because she was this or that. There was six chairs. Right. And they said, we need three and three. Right. When Tiana met Zeus, they said they thought she was a little quiet, like kind of on the quiet side. Therefore, they were moving forward because the conversation is a loud project. Yeah. I don't know if anybody's watched the conversation, but this is a black owned network. I, I can highly doubt that these men from Detroit don't want to use Tiana. But I when didn't they know that that was a rumor that it was about color. The problem was they were looking for loud people, drama, 
Every time they came to the house, they saw where the drama was while we were filming in Atlanta. They were watching us for three or four days. This is exactly what Natalie wanted. They argued, Natalie and Jada fall, but you could just tell it was all core hugs because Natalie would have her moments. She was like, stay focused, stay focused, stay stay with it. And this helped them land a show on Zeus Network. Shortly after it was announced that Baddies ATL was announced. This is how we're in the Baddies universe now. Natalie was the executive producer and the cast was Natalie, Sarah, Tanisha, Janelle, Seven, Judy, Christina, and Sydney Starr. Now, people was confused at first. They was like, what's Sydney Starr doing here? But Natalie was like, it's not just BGC girls. It's just like everybody. Also to be noted, Natalie and Tanisha was beefing like real bad prior to this show coming out. Back and forth on live and just sending shots at each other. And a lot of their arguments and stuff ended up on the shade And People was confused. They was like, this is not really Tanisha character. But then it all made sense when she saw that she was going to be on Baddies. She said it wasn't fake, but it is Zeus we dealing with. So Zeus did air Baddies ATM. As far as the show overall, it, it was kind of slow. Natalie Nunn was like, oh, we're gonna see them in a different life. But it was just like the same BS. Bunch of girls in the house arguing over dumb stuff. Except this time it was no structure because everybody had a producer credit. And then they kept saying, we're gonna get to the bed, we're gonna get to the bed. But all we see them do was just be in the moon bound. And then we also kept seeing like Sydney try to relive her bad girls club dream by trying to do all these old BGC antics. Like I'm gonna get her out of the house and throwing breakfast in bread and getting, like it was, it was just tired and played out. So you got breakfast on the couch, bitch. How you like how I feel like you did Don't for Don't touch me. You lucky I didn't bring the milk. You're like a huge... <laughs> but Zeus messed with Natalie and her idea. Apparently they liked it, so they kept her around. Now under Natalie regime, she pitched and got Bad Boys Club picked up, and you know, and and production was started on it. Now fun fact: Natalie has been shipping this show for a minute. The working title called Bad Boys USA back in 2015. You know, her, Sarah, Judy, Flo, they had auditions. Like she really wanted this to get picked up. But you know, Sarah said Natalie was scamming. Sarah got like 150 chapters of exposed and Natalie, and I'm literally not exaggerate it probably is 150 chapters but bad boy had everyone auditioning because people's excited like it has been different variations all over youtube and this one creator gemini films like you know he's real known for doing like the bad boys club i was excited like wow we finally get it on a network it's gonna be good it's gonna be a lot of new people we ain't seen but a lot of people was very disappointed when they finally got the cast and they saw it was just like a whole bunch of influencers and d-list celebrities it was like people that natalie just Knew her in a circle or was friends with. Plus, they spent like the whole season trying to put this music video out and start a rap career. That season, the first season, it featured Milan from Love and Hip Hop, you know, The Real, Where the Money Reside, Carry On, Kurt Franklin's son, um, this man, Moolah. And Moolah was supposed to be there for like straight representation, but you know, he had a podcast. Curtis was there as well, straight representation. Anthony, he's one of Natalie good friends. Like they like this. William the Baddest, who's been on Catfish a thousand times. Gutta, who was on the original Bad Boys Club. And a boy named Dylan from Clarksville, Tennessee. Also, Andrew Codwell, I'm not gay no more. He was on the show, but he wasn't on the show. He keeps saying Zeus tricked him, but he still did the promo video, but he left the first day and won his check. So I personally wasn't the biggest fan of it. Uh, it was just overly chaotic for no reason. And they only had like one replacement. That replacement was just there. They never had a reunion due to everybody's egos and pride. After that, everybody want to go to these different random networks and create their own bad boys club show. Like Milan got this bad boys Atlanta. Dylan got like the baddies Nashville coming out. It's just like, sit down. In this 2022 era, Zeus knows exactly what they're doing and they know exactly what they want to show. They realize at this point, ratchetness just sailed. People love train wrecks, people love mess. And it's like, they found that niche and just went straight dab into it. Now a show that was announced in August of this year that's coming soon allegedly, and they also start hell auditions for, was a show called Baby Mamas of Los Angeles. And it was legit, Natalie posted it as Natalie Nunn, Brittany Renner, and Yasmin Lopez, the winner uh, one more chance, you know, people know her as Yummy. I'm not sure if it's still coming out because I haven't heard much of it, but yeah, it was announced in August of this year. But anyways, 2022 is definitely the year of the baddie. After season one was done, season two was greenlit and they went ahead and went forward with it. And I ain't gonna lie, season two hit with a bang. It was like a whole different show. This time it will be called Baddie South and they will be hitting the road, going to city to city in the South, getting to the bad and doing club promotions and, you know, hosting. This season it featured a returning Natalie Nunn, Jayla from season 14, Tina Baggers Club, Sway from season 16, and Bree from season 17. But we also start to see 
other outside people coming as well. So from the One More Chance show, we have Rolly and Slim. Then we have an OnlyFans creator and Krishona Rock, who was a fan favorite. Like she was gaining a lot of popularity for her relationship with Blueface. If you want to see more on that timeline, please check out my Blueface and Rock relationship timeline video. Also, Christina was called back for season two. We did a day of filming and dip. We talked a lot about that. I saw that interview with Twitch TV. But yeah, it premiered. Um, a lot of people tuned in. This is also when we get to replace Miss Scotty. Scotty was brought in midways to the season they helped him get to the bad. She said she run her city Charlotte. And yeah, season was cool, it was straight, but it is Zeus Network and they was like focusing heavily on the fight. Zeus is like, when in doubt, fight it out. That's like they go to. Now what's funny to know is that Ray J, who was the producer of the Zeus Network, he, at this point he has cut ties with him. And he got his new network, the Dodge Network coming out. And this network, he got Sydney Star with a dating show and Raz B from B2K, they got shows coming out. It was also rumored that Jocelyn's show was headed to Ray J's show, but she shut some rumors down. But I feel like that's very interesting. But you know, Zeus is so secretive with their stuff. Like it's never revealed why they cut ties. So many other networks like, Baby, in 2023, don't nobody else make no more networks. I'm sorry. But under this new era of Natalie Nunn, they did a lot of audition specials for like Bad Boys Club season two and for Baddies West season three. Denisha John was helping host in all of them. I forgot to mention her earlier, but she's also has a pivotal role in the creation of Zeus Network. She has been with Zeus from day one, hosting, news, anchoring. They even, she was even, Zeus was literally outside at the um, George Floyd protest and that was documented. G Janisha was following along. Hey guys, uh, so I'm Janisha John. I am one of the correspondents here at the Zeus Network. And we are currently on Third Street in uh, Los Angeles. We're heading towards the, uh, the actual protest that's being held here in Los Angeles. But Janisha is either married or with a uh, limb. They got something going on. I also in this area because you know, it's a trend for people from VH1 to come over and have a show on Zeus. We got the most recent show, Bobby, I Love You Pure. Now this show came about after they had their conversation episode, Bobby and Roland Wright. The conversation episode, I ain't gonna lie, it was good, it was entertaining. So after the success of their uh, conversation show, they was like, okay, let's give y'all a show where Bobby is looking for love and Roland Wright is on their friend helping him find love. And this show was the first black gay dating show. We went on my full thoughts analysis on that show. Please check out my Bobby, I Love You Exposed video. I'm not much of a fan of it. Let's just continue to show the black gay community in the mockery, but that's just me. And now currently we have Blueface and Krishan. Currently they have a show out right now following the controversial relationship of Blueface and Krishan called Crazy in Love. And this is the current state of Zeus. The future of Zeus, they have Baddies Wiz coming out next year for season three. Also, a lot of people said they have their shows on the way. One More Chance season three is scheduled to come out. Rolly says she got a show coming out. Jonathan said he got a show coming out. Bad Boys season two, it's a, it's a lot of different things coming out. But it's really interesting to know like how much Zeus has really just like transformed. Started off as some really innocent influencers to really like, you know, be represented the right proper way. And now it's just mess and it's just fights and just, miss yeah that is the complete history of zeus network i really hope y'all enjoyed this video and i really hope it was worth the way i really hope y'all enjoyed thank y'all so much for all the love y'all showed me in 2022 i can't wait for y'all to see all the great things i got skills in 2023 if y'all like this video stay tuned and i will see you guys in my next video bye